In this video, we'll take a look at Cheerio and how we can use Cheerio to grab elements off of a web page. Cheerio is defined on their GitHub page as a fast, flexible, and lean implementation of jQuery designed specifically for the server. Let's create a new file in our project folder for our Cheerio examples. I'm going to call my file ex2.js. I'm going to transfer over the basic scaffolding. So this is just going to include our server and the node modules. We're going to start with an easier example. And by easier, I mean that the class and IDs are transparently defined within the web page. Okay, and before we get there, here is the Cheerio GitHub where you can find some useful information on how to implement and use Cheerio outside of this course. We are going to be scraping this Indeed web page. You can follow along on any Indeed listing because the elements that we'll be scraping are all the same. So let's inspect the element. So we're going to be scraping certain elements off this page. We'll be scraping the job summary but we'll also be scraping the title, the company name, and the location. So we'll open up this div right here, and we'll see that the job title is highlighted, and it has a class of job title. So that actually makes it very easy for us to scrape the contents, because all we have to do using jQuery syntax is say dollar sign quotes and use the dot notation. Same thing with the company. It's a class and company in order to get the name. Same thing with the location. Class is location, and it gives us the name right here. The only one that's a little bit different is the summary, which is an ID. In jQuery, we instead of using a dot notation, we'll use the hash notation in order to grab this element. Now let's build some concrete examples. I'll first define the URL that we'll be scraping, which is the web page that we just visited. We'll use our request method and pass in the fun and pass in the URL. Declare a function that takes an error response and body. We're going to set a dollar sign variable. You could set this variable to anything. It's just a very standard practice to set our main Cheerio dot load method as a dollar sign. We're going to pass in the body. So this is what allows us to use Cheerio and grab the elements off the page is that we're going to pass in the entire page into Cheerio and then we can do work. So our first example will be to grab the company name off of the page. So this right here is standard jQuery syntax for grabbing an element and it's specifically grabbing a class element. However, in order to actually get the text that we're looking for, we have to chain a dot text method in order to actually grab the text itself. Of course it would be prettier if we could just chain text like this, but this doesn't work. So that's why we have to declare a second variable in order to be able to use the doc text. So in this example, we're grabbing the class company element and assigning a variable of company name text in order to grab the name Fuse Lab so that when we log company name text we should get Fuse Lab. Okay, it looks like I forgot to bring in Cheerio. Okay, we try it again and we get what we're looking for, the name of the company. There's one other way that we can grab elements using Cheerio and that's by using the filter method. Filter is just a built-in functional JavaScript method that we can use in order to filter out whatever it is that we're looking for. When using it in conjunction with Cheerio, we're typically just grabbing whatever it is that we're looking for in the same way that we did above.
The only difference is that we pass in this as our first variable assignment. And you can see it works just the same. In this last example, I'm going to show you how to save various elements as an object and print that entire object to the console. I'm going to call this object job. And we'll just use our initial way of assigning our elements. In my job object, I want to export the company name, the job title, the location, as well as the summary. Let's start with the job title. So if we take a look, we'll see that our job title is right here. And if we open this up, within our job title class, we want to get the font attribute and then save the text within the font. So how we can do that is we will say dot job title then space font. And that's all that we need to grab the text that we're looking for. The location is right here. And the location is Los Angeles, California. So that's another easy one. And we'll take a look at where the summary element is. Okay, the summary element is right here. So the summary is... We can use either of these. We can use the ID or the class, but either way we need to drill down and get the P element. So in this one we'll use the hashtag and the hashtag is for the IDs. So job underscore summary and we're grabbing the P. Now the way that we can export all of these together is by creating an object. So we'll make a variable job which is going to be an object. So so when we're exporting our job object, we can name it anything that we want. Meaning that we can reuse, quote unquote, the name job title. Since it's not a variable, it's just the name of the first key value pair of the object that we're creating. So we can say job title equals job title text. And then it will give us back the job title text variable. Same thing with our other defined variables above. We can just say location is location text. So when we print this out, we should get back a JSON-like object with job title, location, company name, and summary becoming what we scraped from our Indeed job post. Okay, so as you can see, that's what we got back. We got back our key value pairs and a JSON-like object. If we wanted to, we could easily trim our summary by appending substring zero comma and the length that we want this to be.